It is a cold, windy day here in Baltimore, Maryland. And when I say cold, it's like 60 degrees, but living in Southern California for quite some time, this is cold to me. Both Jessica and I love being in Maryland. And sadly, we're only here for one day. We're here filming another haunt in our series of going inside the scariest haunts in America, turning on the lights and showing you the art of the scare, how these places choose to scare you. Tonight, we're doing another one. With that being said, I have a few hours to just kind of get out and explore a cemetery that I've been wanting to take our cameras in for quite some time. Every time we come here, I haven't been able to do it, but today, I'm gonna to show you some of the famous strange graves here in Baltimore, Maryland. Now you know, just as well as I do, that throughout the country, throughout the world even, some cemeteries have some really unique tombstones. Well, the first one that we're going to visit is a tombstone, the final resting place for a man by the name of Elijah Bond. His tombstone, get this, you ready? It's a Ouija board. Well, not a working Ouija board, but you'll see what I mean. Growing up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, not too far from Baltimore. We would often take weekend trips down here. I mean, Edgar Allan Poe, John Wilkes Booth, we're going to show you his grave in just a little bit. But this is one of the graves, the tombstones that I fell in love with at early days of the Grim Life Collective. I've never seen anything like this. And we've seen a lot of awesome, awesome tombstones across the country. Just the fact that this tombstone is a Ouija board should be enough. But of course, there's a story as to why this is here, why there's a Ouija board here in Baltimore, Maryland. Well, the guy who's buried here, Elijah Bond, he's credited as being the inventor of the Ouija board. And there's the back of the tombstone. Elijah Jefferson Bond, patentee of the Ouija board, born January 23rd, 1847, and died April 14th, 1921. And there's some hands on a planchette. It says, Talking Board Historical Society, established 2013. I'm guessing the Talking Board Historical Society is the ones who paid for and put this tombstone here, because I highly doubt that this looked like this back in 1921. And of course, with any notable grave, people leave little trinkets and money and pennies even. And we're going to talk about pennies a little bit later on whenever we visit John Wilkes Booth's grave on the other side of the cemetery. There's even some dead flowers here. It's funny, all the times that I've been to Baltimore, I've been to the cemetery quite a bit. And each time I come here, I always forget about this stone, this plot. It's for the Abel family, A-B-E-L-L. -L. And it's a stone in the shape of a coffin that's encased in glass. Now you see this quite a bit in Chicago, but not so much here in Baltimore. It's beautiful, right? Standing off to the side, leaning over the top, Trying to get a clear shot. The flowers, the writing, everything is just gorgeous. The glass kind of makes everything look otherworldly, almost like it's underwater, doesn't it? Because it's early in the morning, I feel like I'm battling with the sun. I can't really get good shots of the different stones and the statues kind of have to get creative. But just look how beautiful this is. 
One of my all-time favorite graves in the entire country is that of Johnny Eck. Well, that was his stage name. His real name was Johnny Eckert. Born August 27, 1911. Died January 5th, 1991. Now, if you don't know the name Johnny Eck, you definitely know his image. He was the sideshow performer, or sideshow freak, however you want to say it, born with out a lower part of his torso. He had no legs. And if you've ever seen the movie Freaks, it was Todd Browning's 1932 cult classic, Johnny Eck can be seen in that, as well as pretty much every Ripley's, believe it or not, across the country, probably even the world. We've never been overseas. But he is buried here in Baltimore, Maryland. I can't even begin to tell you how many times I've come to pay my respects when I was living over here on the East Coast in Pittsburgh. Pretty wild, right? Johnny Eck. Even though it's still windy, it's starting to warm up a little bit. I think Jessica could have came out and enjoyed the day, a little nice little stroll through the cemetery, but she does not like the cold. And we've been on the road for quite some time. And uh, so I wanted to give her some time to rest. So took a couple hours, went out to explore the cemetery, and we're not gonna visit all of the notable graves here, just a few of the ones that I've missed from whenever I used to live here in this area. Well, I didn't live in Baltimore. I lived in Pittsburgh, but would often come down to Baltimore because I had friends here and Edgar Allan Poe, and it's just a, a neat little town. And every chance I get to stroll through a cemetery, especially a cemetery like this, I gotta take it. I mean, it's relaxing. I find it relaxing. Hopefully you guys do too. The last grave that we want to visit here in Greenmount Cemetery is over in the Dogwood area section. And that's the final resting place of John Wilkes Booth, the man who shot and killed and assassinated President Abraham Lincoln. The thing about Booth's grave, it's a little hard to find. I mean, it's not on the main road. You kind of have to park and walk this pathway that I'm on right now. And it kind of goes back deep into the cemetery. But there's a little section where his family is actually buried. And the exact location, the exact plot of where he is, even though there's a stone and people think that's him, it's technically, it's unknown. About halfway up the walkway on the right-hand side is where you'll find the Booth family plot. And I was honestly a little worried that it was gonna be in direct sunlight because it would have been almost impossible to photograph, but lucky for us, it's in the shade. Now on the center of your screen is the Booth obelisk. And surrounding it in this plot is all the Booth family members. Now here's where things get a little strange. After John Wilkes Booth shot Abraham Lincoln, he went on the run. Everybody knew who he was and everybody was looking for him. Eventually, after he was caught and he was hung, he was buried in a prison cemetery. His body was dug up and it was buried in the earthly grounds of a warehouse on like an unmarked grave. There were rumors that his body was deposited in sea, like a burial at sea. But eventually, over the years, his family acquired his remains and they put them here. Now, in all the different things that I've read online, even Green Mount Cemetery really doesn't know where in this plot John Wilkes Booth is buried. There's a stone for him, well, an unmarked stone, and that's believed to be him. I'm gonna show you some of the names of his family members in just a minute, but in order to find John Wilkes Booth, he's over here in the corner. That stone right there. You see what I mean? There's nothing on it. No inscription, nothing except for a bunch of pennies, which of course we brought a penny, so we're gonna go ahead and put it right there. Lincoln head up. Which is kind of funny, you know? Basically, Lincoln's getting the last word. Also in the family plot we have Cora E. Booth, who died in 1936. This one's a little hard to read. Joseph A. Booth, and died in 1902. 
And I like this stone mainly because of the cross and direct sunlight. But here's Richard Booth who died in 1839. Another family member on this side. This time it's Rosalie Booth, 1889 at the age of 65. And then right here, buried together, Junius and Marianne Booth. This is a little hard to read, but up there at the top of the monument, it says, to the memory of the children of Junius Brutus and Mary Ann Booth, John Wilkes, Frederick, Elizabeth, Mary Ann, Henry Byron, Joseph Booth. Joseph, Joseph Adrian Booth, I think it says. With that being said, I have to head back to the hotel, get Jessica, and head over to the haunt to film for the night. It was a nice little jaunt in Green Mount Cemetery here in Baltimore, Maryland. And with that being said, until next time, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stay? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way.